Well, you know? I think that what we've seen, I mean, if you go back and look at all of the <coughs> theories 15 or 20 years ago about the various societies around the planet and what happened to them, the ones that you know mysteriously or suddenly just disappeared from the historical stage, Chaco Canyon, the Anasazi being a, a, a perfect example, but you could cite 10 or 12 others easily, okay? They always attributed that to some kind of factors that were like socially internal, something that humans did to themselves. Somebody, you know, they uh, too much slash and burn agriculture, or they over farmed, or they adopted some sort of a static social philosophy that didn't allow them to be adaptable, which, which in some cases actually may be true. But the paradigm shift that we've seen in the last 10 or 15 years, I think, is the realization that there have been natural forces that really have profoundly affected us in our culture, our civilization, a lot more than anybody even imagined. And a lot of these factors wasn't so much like some political factor, except insofar as a political state of mind prevented people from adapting to what was going on. But then is the fact that, you know, there have been these sudden and catastrophic changes. And the realization that sudden and catastrophic changes have been almost part of the norm. And what we're reading from the climate record is that actually it turns out that our own period has maybe been somewhat abnormal in that we have enjoyed a couple of centuries of relatively stable climate compared to what our ancestors went through on a regular basis. And you know, so that's where I get, that's where I start losing patience with the hysteria about, you know, CO2 warming and so forth, because I want to go listen, people, do you know what, have you, have you studied the history of climate? Because if you have at all, you will know that the climate has been changing com constantly, and a lot more than we've seen in the last century or two. And most of the time, those changes, we've been affected or victimized by those changes. And we have had nothing to do, very little to do, with causing those changes. So, you know, why would you think that now the climate shouldn't be changing? And the other fact is that when you look at the historical record and the response of society to climate changes, climate warmings have always been more benign than climate coolings. <coughs> Bubonic plague and the black plague, they followed right in the wake of the climate cooling of the Little Ice Age and the contraction of agriculture, the collapse, several year collapse of agriculture in Europe because of the cold that set in. And if you look at the last 3,000 years of history, when do you see the biggest population explosion and see the biggest uh, increase in human lifespan occurred during the medieval warm period? When it warmed to possibly as much as a degree warmer than it is now. I mean, how do you explain the fact that, you know, the Vikings were farming up on the west coast of Greenland, farming where it's now permafrost? If this is the warmest the climate's ever been, how do you explain that? Please explain that to me. So the question becomes, the question becomes, is this something that is of pertinence to us here and now? Yes, the yes, fact yes, that yes. there would be climate changes, <laughs> is it possible that there could be climate changes, completely irrespective of anything Al Gore says, or any of the scenarios about global warming, is it possible that there could be other factors, and I think most of us are in agreement at this point of our understanding, that there are other factors that have been at work, and probably other factors that haven't been identified yet. But in any case, you know, we are putting all of our eggs in one basket, and that is human-induced CO2 warming. And it may turn out that that's the least of our worries. That's what, what I'm thinking.